get in touch with and and have and talk to on the phone and and uh, get instruction or whatever that I needed at that time whenever I would uh, feel these things coming back to me eh? you know but uh, uh, I tried to in those days I tried to I tried to escape from it so I went into making jewelry and painting and because I, I do watercolors and oils and pastels and and uh, I like my art uh, so I I went that way and by going that way I met these people and I lived in Alberta for about 30 years and I lived right beside the Blackfoot natives there and my friends were all Blackfoot out there so I wasn't I loved their their culture and I loved those people that they they brought me into their reserve and made me feel welcome and I had very good friends out there I lived on the reserve there for a while was your painting and your artwork a way of healing for you yes it was an, an outlet a note you know for my for my feelings and not to think about those things that I went through yeah yeah this is a redundant question but I just want to get it on tape what do you think that the residential schools did to the First Nations community at large to the culture of First Nations people at large and now to the generations coming uh, well I, th I think they're um, they really, uh, they really destroy the people, a people which are unique, which were unique in their living, in their taking care of themselves, because after a while the welfare came, and introducing uh, alcohol and, and uh, all the other things that they did to try to exterminate us. It was just like genocide, really. You know, they brought those, those scurvy and typhoid fever, and because we, we. You know, as a people, my ancestors did not have all that. Yeah, germ warfare. Yes. Mm -hmm. They brought blankets. Yeah. The 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 germs in the blankets, and they distribute them all out yeah. to the tuberculosis. In the yes. Blankets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a very bad. That's a very bad thing. I don't know. We we would never have thought about doing that to another race of people. We welcomed them when they came. When the missionaries came and that we went, we welcomed them and we helped them through the winter. We understood that if we did not help them, they would die. But they did not understand us. We knew that word understand, but we did not how, know how to write it. We didn't even know how to say it. But we knew that word here, understand, in our hearts. And we understood that if they did not know how to take care of themselves in the winter, they would die here in Canada. That's what I always say that word understand. That's why they didn't. That's what brought on the reserves. 
on the wars between the native people and the and the missionaries or um, extrude I forget now how you say it. The other people. I used to know that word in Blackfoot. The other people. It's called. And uh, I think that's what this was the understanding. And the lack of communication, I think. That they did not know what we were, as in our language. Our language has, uh, sometimes it has not words, not a word for one thing. A one thing could have many words, and it could, could be described as a beautiful thing, or an ugly thing, or a bad thing. So that's why when they talked to, the, to my, my people that were here before, way before me. That's why when they talked to them, they, they couldn't understand what, what they were talking about and trees and all that. Hey? But as far as living and, and knowing that people had to live and people had to eat, and they would not see people die or starve. So that's why they showed them how to live in, in, in this land. So I think that was a, that's why we lost our culture. They did not let us talk in our language when we were at school. And then they had, they had uh, kids too that they would do favors for if they pointed out people talking in their language. Yeah. So they were like bullies too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, there were some people like that here. Since you didn't get to see your siblings very much at school, did you sort of form bonds with other students? Yes. Over here? Mm -hmm. I was looking at a book there, and it's from Chapel. It's from here. It's in the archives there, Chapel School. All my girlfriends that I had when I was going to school, too. It made me glad to see their faces, but they're gone now. Do you know anyone today that you went to school with? Pardon? Do you know anyone today that you went to school with? Oh yes, there's some in there. Oh. Oh yeah. Susie. Oh, you went to school with Susie? Yeah, she was in, she was going to town school, like high school. She went to SUTEC. She was going to SUTEC while I was in senior uh, classroom. Did you say that Shirley's your sister? Yes, Shirley's my sister. The one you were sitting beside? No, she has orange top. On. There's Got two short Shirley's, hair. Right? Yeah, there's two Shirley's. With the black hair or the gray hair? Uh, she has got a little bit of gray hair in her, oh, okay. and she's uh, she's kind of tall, and uh, she got the orange T-shirt on. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. Yeah, she was only a little girl when I went to school. They brought her there. She was a baby. With my brother, he was, like I said, two. She was probably four four years old. They were just babies. Your brother was two when they brought him to the school? Yes. Mm -hmm. They brought him to the school in Chapel, and then here too, he was here. Wow. Yeah. I used to look at him and he'd be sitting at the end of the table, big long table with a high chair there. And one time they were, I guess he must have spilled his, his cereal or something and the supervisor went over and hit him and 
you know, he was sitting in his chair, high chair there. I wanted to go over and and just hug him and because when I was home, I was looking after them too. They were just baby. And I felt it was my my duty to go over there and see to him, you know. Pushed me away and told me to get back to where I was sitting. We never saw very much, I never saw very much of my Because when I was in school, I was up with the girls, the senior girls and the intermediates, and they were down in the junior, my younger sisters. And they all played outside all together, and then we were all together, see seniors. No, we couldn't mix up. The only place we could do that was outside. Yeah. And then uh, once a month I saw my brothers. I saw them in church, but I couldn't talk to them. When we went to, we all went and all my family was in the choir. We went to that chapel down there. to just smile at them and that was it. When you it all was, got out and did you all, all of your siblings go back and live with your family on the reserve? When when they got out of school when they were 16? You mean for good? Yeah. Uh, no, we didn't have no place to go to. We didn't have any place to go to on the reserve because we didn't have no, to this day, we don't have a reserve. That's what we're fighting for too, is our reserve. Where was your father living then? Our father was living on, like he was working for the railroad and he had to live in separate towns here and there, right? Eh? But in the summertime we went to, like uh, July and August, we went to stay with him, right? Eh? And then my sister was always, she stayed in White River, and that's where we went most of the time. We stayed with her. She was married and had children of her own. She was the oldest in the family. She had came here too. Is that where you went when you were 16? Yeah. To your sister's? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I went from there. I had a job first uh, first at the Department of Lands and Forest, like I was saying, and then I couldn't stay there because I, I, I couldn't stand it there, having people come up behind me and, you know, you know. So it's a psychological thing I went through and, and all of these children, I think, as social, uh, Thing, social, yeah. Because you feel foreign. Imagine feeling foreign in your own language, in your own land, in your own country. You know. Yeah. I went to help my aunt. She was. And then my brothers and sisters, the younger ones, came over there too, so I had to look after them and look after my aunt too. So I couldn't leave till I was 21 years old. Yeah. But I was taught how to cook by her, taught how to look after a house, and look after chickens <laughs> and rabbits and chickens, garden. So that's where I got all my home economics from. Yeah. But we miss the parenting. We miss our our father and mother.
go now. That's one of the things I find so amazing from most of the survivors that I meet who all seem to be married and have children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I just find that amazing that mm -hmm. not being shown love as a child, you could foster a relationship mm -hmm. with someone else and stay with them for decades and mm -hmm. raise children. And yeah. I can't imagine how difficult it must be mm -hmm. to overcome that and learn it by mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. when you were never shown it as a child. Yeah. Well, I don't have any children myself. All my sisters and brothers have married and have children. I had one son, but he died at childbirth. So that's my little bit of the history of the school, schools that I went to. I really wish that, I don't know, I want a big part of this documentary to just be why is it not taught? Like, why do we, in schools, we learn about atrocities in almost every country in the yes. world. Yes. Mm -hmm. But white Canadians have no idea what's going on with First Nations no. people no. in our own country. Yeah. People it, living in third world conditions yes. in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. We're completely ignorant. There's third world con country conditions here too on our reserves and some of them. I know. Yes. And uh, that's uh, why I'm saying that uh, there, uh, there must be another way that they could have done everything that they did besides uh, trying to exterminate or trying to uh, assimilate or because you can't make a a bird into a bear or a bear into a bird. <laughs> That's the way I look at it anyway. It's just you know, and I think in the history of the world I think a lot of countries tried to do that. You know. Yeah. Almost every country exterminated its indigenous mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I it's think there could have been a lot to learn the other way around. Yes. The Europeans could have learned a lot from the from the indigenous people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they're closer to the land. They're closer to Mother Earth. They, their ancestors have been living with all, without all the, the things that we have today. Eh? You know. Just and they li life. and they lived. They lived and they survived till today. So So I hope uh, this is uh, a learning thing or a learning. Thank goodness we have the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, be able to tell our stories. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.